Poppy Boss yan. Masarong kam! Hi, ni hao. Hwan ying guang ling. Welcome. Selamat datang. Welcome. The Borneo rainforest is the oldest in the world, 130 million years old. That's 70 million years older than the Amazon. Mount Kinabalu, the dominant feature in the Kinabalu Park, is the highest peak between the Himalayas and New Guinea. The Kinabalu Park is a World Heritage Site and has a total area of 75,370 hectares. By comparison, Singapore has a land area of about 64,000 hectares. Out of the 12 regions of mega biodiversity in the world, Borneo ranks with the Amazonia and Equatorial Africa. Borneo lies in the heart of the mega biodiversity ecoregion of the Indo Pacific Basin and Malaysia. Sabah is special because, in terms of biodiversity per unit area, Sabah is the best in Borneo. According to the National Geographic, 10 square kilometers of Malaysian rainforest has more flora and fauna than that of North America and Europe combined. Here, in the Indo-Pacific Global Center of Coral Biodiversity, is the cradle of coral evolution. Beginning with 70 genera in the areas around Borneo, it reduces gradually as one moves outwards. The Coral Triangle, the Amazon of the Seas, is the center of marine biodiversity for the world. It is home to one of the most diverse collections of marine life in the world, with over 75% of coral species known to science. Over 3,000 species of reef fish. Over 500 species of coral. This is unmatched in the world in terms of marine biodiversity per unit area. The Borneo pygmy is the world's smallest elephant. Herds of 30 or more roam the jungles and riverbanks in the east coast. The Sukau area in the lower reaches of the Kinabatangan River has one of the world's richest diversity of flora and fauna including the proboscis monkey, one of the ten species of primates found in Sabah. The snake bird, or oriental darter, which has disappeared from peninsula Malaysia, is seen here in large numbers. The east coast is also home to the globally recognized orangutan. The Sepilok Orangutan Rehabilitation Center was established in 1964, making it the first of its kind in the world. The Gomantong Cave, famous for its populations of swiftlets, which produce valuable edible nests, is protected by strict laws to ensure sustainability. Other conservation areas include the Danum Valley Conservation Area, Tabin Wildlife Reserve, and Maliao Basin, the Lost World. The Danum Valley Field Center is both a research and education facility. I am very impressed. I think Sabah is one of the prime ecotourism destinations of the world. And since the first time, I've been impressed by the beauty of the natural landscape, first and foremost. So Borneo in general, and very especially Sabah, I insist, is a prime ecotourism destination for ecotourists around the world. Jungle lodges in selected areas promise visitors the rare and unique experience of being in the world's oldest rainforest. Beyond the shores of mainland Sabah, conservation areas include the Tunku Abdul Rahman Park, which was established in 1974, following a joint study by the government and WWF Malaysia. Pulau Selingan, 
where giant turtles come ashore to lay their eggs, is open to visitors, but they must observe strict rules enforced by the Sava Park's rangers. Several other areas have been identified for marine conservation purposes, including the Tun Sakaran Marine Park off the east coast and the Tun Mustafa Marine Park in the north. World-renowned Sipanan Island has also been placed under strict control, while other islands frequented by visitors are closely monitored. Borneo is the orchid island of the world, containing more than 10% of the orchids of the world. More than half of these are found in the Kinabalu Park. Other wonderful plants of Sabah include the Nepenthes, or pitcher plant, and the world's largest flower, the Raphalesia. Not surprisingly, the Kinabalu Park is a center of plant diversity for Southeast Asia. A comprehensive botanical collection exists at the Sabah Agricultural Park, located within the Crocker Range, which is Malaysia's biggest mountain range. Closer to the city of Kota Kinabalu is another treasure trove, the Lokkawi Wildlife Park. Within the city itself is the Likas Wetland, a mangrove reserve visited by hundreds of migratory birds each year. And on that note, Sabah offers something very special for bird watchers. There are more than 622 species of birds in Borneo, and out of this number, 34 species are endemic to Sabah. There are eight species of hornbills in Borneo, and all can be found in Sabah. This is a trek of a different kind. It traces part of the route of the infamous death marches during which more than 2,000 Allied prisoners of war died. Several memorials have been put up in honor of those brave men, including the Kundasang War Memorial, close to where the death marches ended, and the Sandakan War Memorial, which sits within what used to be the prisoner of war camp. Many age-old customs and traditions are still found in parts of Sabah. Most of the rituals reflect the intimate relationship between the ancient peoples of this land and their surrounding. Musical instruments made of natural materials like wood, bamboo and beeswax are found throughout Sabah. Also popular are gong ensembles, which vary from one district to another and are played in many different and complex ways. The unique music of gongs reverberates in many parts of Sabah during the month of May, when Sabah celebrates Pesta Ka'amatan, or Harvest Festival. This is only one of many cultural and religious festivals in this part of Malaysia. On a slightly different note is the annual Regatta Lepa in the otherwise quiet town of Semporna. A celebration of Sabah's rich cultural heritage is held annually and simply named Sabah Fest. The liveliness of Sabah's traditional dances reflects the vibrance of modern life in Malaysia's second largest state. The rapid growth of Kota Kinabalu, the capital city, is also seen in other urban centers in Sabah. Despite rapid modernization, many things remain unchanged. Take, for example, the Tamu, which is an open-air market where the variety of goods and produce provide a unique shopping experience. A modern version of the Tamu is the Sunday Gaya Street Fair in Kota Kinabalu, during which a main thoroughfare in the central business district is closed to vehicles for half a day. Another famous Tamu is the annual Tamu Basar in Kota Balud, 
a district famous also for the Bajau horsemen, colorful cowboys of the East. For visitors and locals alike, Sabah is one huge arena for adventure sports. Mountain climbing is taken to new extremes by international skyrunners who race to the top of Mount Kinabalu and back. Divers just cannot get enough of places like Sipadan, Mabul, Kapalai, Langkayan, Mata King, Mantanani, and Layang Layang. Sea walking and other marine activities provide fun and excitement for all ages at Tunku Abdul Rahman Park. Once a year, Chinese drums and decorated boats create the perfect atmosphere for dragon boat races. The excellent sandy beaches of Sabah are dotted with world-class resorts, which provide the perfect combination of modern comforts and natural surroundings. The luxury of both business and leisure in the same place is what brings many group travelers to Sabah. On that same note, serious and recreational golfers have also found Sabah to be the perfect place to tee off, from the top of Borneo to the tip of Borneo. This is the most unique greens in all of Borneo, the Kinabalu Golf Club, in the mountains surrounding the picturesque town of Kundasang. And this is one of the oldest golf courses in Sabah, close to what is literally the northern tip of Borneo Island, Tanjung Simpang Mungayao. This was once an important gateway to Borneo, but that was in the days of sailboats and steamships. Today, most visitors to Sabah arrive at the Kota Kinabalu International Airport, which has been upgraded to become one of the most modern in Malaysia. Besides Kuala Lumpur, there are direct flights to and from many major cities of the world. The number of visitors to Sabah has increased tremendously in less than 10 years since the late 1990s. Surveys indicate that about 40% are repeat visitors. These are the five-star hotels and resorts. The number of hotel rooms in Sabah has also increased, with 400 hotels providing a total of 15,695 rooms. An additional 6,000 rooms will be needed by 2012. The private sector spent 1 billion US dollars in the last 10 years in tourism infrastructure and enjoyed good return on investment. All these and more are in anticipation of the different needs of visitors. I can't think of a better place to spend the happiest part of my year than on a holiday set between the coral reefs and set between the rainforest with the biodiversity of Sava and Mount Kinabalu and the whole particular... This is a theme park. You don't have to build a plastic theme park. You don't need Walt Disney here. You've got a living solar-powered theme park. Find out for yourself what more and more travelers around the world are excited about. Come, experience the best of Borneo.
in Sabah. The island of Borneo is blessed with a rich diversity of flora and fauna. Here in the northern region is the Malaysian state of Sabah, a land of superlatives. Most visitors to Sabah come because of this rich natural heritage to experience nature at its best. Others are more specific in their goals, and among them are bird watchers. Borneo has 622 resident and migratory birds, of which 32 species are endemic to Borneo. And out of these 32, 24 can be found here in Sabah. Among the Borneo endemics is the Bornean bristlehead, which is high on the trophy list of all bird watches. The Oriental data, which has no longer been seen in Peninsula Malaysia, can still be spotted in Sabah. It was once common in many parts of Asia. There are eight species of hornbills in Borneo, and all can be found in Sabah. Migratory birds fly to this region between November to April, which is the wet northeast monsoon period in Borneo. This time of the year coincides with the northern hemisphere autumn and winter. With the diversity of habitats and the accessibility of many viewing locations, Sabah promises excellent opportunities for both beginners and serious bird watchers. 24 of Borneo's endemics are found either in Sabah's montane forest on Mount Kinabalu or on the forested hill slopes. The Kinabalu Park is a World Heritage Site with a forested area of 754 square kilometers. Out of the 58 strictly montane birds found in this park, 17 are endemic to Borneo. There are many well laid out trails throughout the area, making it possible for serious bird watchers to seek out quiet areas. Bird watching is possible even from the roadside. The Crocker Range National Park, gazetted in 1984, is the largest protected park in Sabah with an area of 1,400 square kilometers. The Rafflesia Forest Reserve is about an hour's drive on a winding road from Kota Kinabalu. Trails at this reserve are good places to spot typical lowland rainforest birds. At the Kaningau Sabah Park's head station, a range of accommodation makes it possible to spend the night. The highlights here include the world's smallest raptor, the white-fronted falconet, found only in the far northwest of Borneo. Sabah's lowland rainforests are home to a multitude of species. The Danum Valley Conservation Area is a world-renowned research facility. There is a good network of trails through the forest and also a 260-meter walkway strung above a valley. Accommodation at the conservation area is limited to staff and researchers. Other visitors can stay at the Borneo Rainforest Lodge. The Tabin Wildlife Reserve is the largest wildlife reserve in Sabah and a vital conservation area. At least 260 bird species have been spotted in Tabin. The reserve is dominated by secondary rainforest, which means trees are shorter and there is more sunlight compared to a primary forest. 
it is therefore relatively easy to spot and photograph birds perched on trees. The Rainforest Discovery Center, set up by the Sabah Forestry Department to promote conservation awareness, is one of the best places for both beginners and serious bird watchers. There are several well-marked trails leading into the surrounding rainforest. Bird watchers can also position themselves on a canopy walkway or on an observation tower, which both give a clear view of the forest canopy. The Pouring Hot Springs, famous for its mineral baths, is within the Kinabalu Park. But the lowland rainforest is the stark contrast to the vegetation found in the highlands. For better viewing chances, bird watchers often avoid the crowded baths and instead take a steep trail leading to a waterfall. The Kinabatangan River, Malaysia's second longest river, begins in the mountains of southwest Sabah and empties into the Sulu Sea. However, it is here in the lower reaches of this river that scientists have recorded one of the world's greatest concentrations of biodiversity. There are several jungle lodges and other facilities in the area, and many visitors stay on for several nights for a truly close encounter with nature. There are many trails leading into the surrounding jungles. A boat ride gives a clear view of several bird species and of course other wildlife such as the Bornean pygmy elephant and the proboscis monkey. The Gomantong Caves are inside this limestone outcrop in the lower Kinabatangan. There are nine caves from which edible birds are collected. The nests are those of swiftlets who share the caves with bats. Inside the caves, Millions of swiftlets build their nest on the ceilings high above the floor. The coastal areas of Sabah are generally good locations to spot several species of resident and migratory birds. In Kota Kinabalu, the Likas Lagoon, which is just outside the city centre, offers great viewing of species such as egrets and herons. The Kota Kinabalu Wetland Center is an important refuge and feeding ground for many species of resident birds as well as migratory species from Northern Asia. Open country and paddy fields around Sabah are generally good areas for bird watching. A growing favorite is the Kota Balud Bird Sanctuary at the Tempasuk Plain between the sea and the foot of Mount Kinabalu. Rice fields dominate the area, and the farm roads running along the canals are good viewing locations. The small roads around the villages in the area also provide good viewing of several species. Several islands off the coast of Sabah are home to many species of birds that are not seen on the mainland. Sabah, Malaysian Borneo where twitching promises new challenges, where life list will definitely get more colourful.
Saba, an aquatic paradise, home to some of nature's most beautiful marine wonders. From shallow azure waters to deep blue seas, not forgetting rustic romantic islands, Saba is a tropical escape like no other. And it is one of the world's best scuba diving destinations. Whether it's your first diving trip or you're a master diver, Saba is the ideal destination to leave your world behind and come discover a different one. Saba is located on Borneo, the third biggest island in the world after Greenland and New Guinea. It is encircled by the South China Sea, Sulu and Celebes Seas. The island's waters are part of the Coral Triangle, the world's most biodiverse ocean environment. This makes the waters off Saba blessed with a multitude of amazing marine life. With direct flights from major cities, Saba is easily accessible. So don't delay. Purchase your flight tickets, book your accommodation, and prepare to begin a love affair that will captivate your heart, body, and mind. On the west coast, you'll find the Tunku Abdul Rahman Marine Park, which is just 10 to 20 minutes by boat from Saba's capital city, Kota Kinabalu. Novice or first-time divers will love the shallow waters that make it ideal for taking your initial steps into the world of diving. For the more experienced, how about combining your love for diving with underwater photography? You can also try the very safe and fun underwater scooter, the Diver Propulsion Vehicle or DPV. The park has major coral reef grounds located on the island's fringes. You will be astonished at the abundance of marine life that you'll come across despite being located so close to Saba's largest city. Accommodation is also available on selected islands within the park. Be prepared to revel in five-star comforts and pleasures. Just outside the Tunku Abdul Rahman Park lies Dinawan Island. Dinawan's reefs are well suited for first-time divers. Plunge into its depths and discover the wonders yourself. After an eventful day, head back to Dinawan's comfy resort. The majority of Dinawan's visitors love the fact that next to scuba diving, there are plenty of other fun things to do. The three islands that form Pulau Tiga Park were created by volcanic lava and ash over millions of years ago. Not to worry though, the volcano has long been extinct, but the island is a hotbed for wildlife, in and out of the water. The seabed of Pulau Tiga is known for its silty substrate. This makes for varied diving conditions and different degrees of visibility, depending on the weather. Still, the park's reefs are blessed with rich marine flora and fauna, sufficient to keep you occupied for days. On Pulau Tiga's smallest island, Snake Island, experienced local guides will lead you to the shiny, shy and extremely poisonous sea serpents, which nest in large numbers within the park. Another unique attraction is a volcanic mud bath. Mantanani is a group of three isolated islands off Saba's west coast. It is a secluded escape from the hectic urban life. Scuba divers are drawn to explore Mantanani Island's three World War II wrecks. The Japanese ships sunk by American forces in 1944 are covered in red, purple and yellow soft corals. These wrecks are safe to frequent and have become a giant playground for more and more fish every day. Mantanani's reefs are equally astounding with amazing coral coverage and a variety of colorful local residents. From the elusive to the bold performers, it's an underwater stage performance every day. And if you're lucky, you may catch a glimpse of the shy and endangered dugongs known to frequent the islands. The hidden jewel, the Liang Liang Atoll, is a secluded hideaway far out in the South China Sea. A 40-minute flight from Kota Kinabalu will get you there. Liang Liang has some of the world's most spectacular reef wall diving sites, with depths plunging to 2,000 meters. If big fish and pelagic are what you're looking for, Liang Liang is the place for you. Schools of scalloped hammerhead sharks and other large marine creatures are common sites in the nutrient-rich and deeper, colder waters. Equally amazing is the rich and pristine coral reef with schools of fish in any imaginable color against crystal clear blue water. And when you must leave the water, head to the very comfortable diver's resort as you rest and recharge 
for tomorrow's adventure. Langkayan is the only dive resort in the vicinity of Sandagan, about 40 minutes flight from Kota Kinabalu. If you like searching for small critters on the seabed, Langkayan will have you unraveling the mysterious world of the bottom dwellers. And while you're acquainting yourself with a myriad of smaller marine life, don't forget to look into the blue. There is always a chance of a big fish encounter. If you like a bit of adventure, the popular Langkayan and mosquito shipwrecks make the perfect introduction to wreck diving. Choose from staying in a beach chalet with a picturesque seafront view or opt for an exclusive bungalow where you may rest in the comforts of luxury. A small but busy place, Sampurna is located on a picturesque bay overlooking the Celebes Sea. Sampurna itself has become popular for one very special reason, night diving. Even though there is limited coral growth due to Sampurna's turbid waters, the narrow but deep waterway running in front of the town gets flushed with nutrients multiple times a day during tide changes. This makes it a thriving area for aquatic life. You will find the most fascinating and unusual creatures, many you will never see during the day. Sampurna is also your gateway to Sabah's East Coast dive locations. Spanning over 35,000 hectares, the Tun Sakaran Marine Park is Malaysia's largest marine park with wonderful marine life that have adapted to the varying underwater environments. Dive into the park's colorful fringing and patch reefs and encounter hundreds of hard and soft coral species, inhabited by even greater numbers of reef fish and larger predators. Seagrass beds and mangroves not only serve as nurseries for reef fish, but also hold a multitude of unique life forms. You will have the rare chance to observe the incredible camouflage adapted by many of the marine life found here. Other sites invite you to search for some of the smaller and elusive critters that hide within the sandy bottom. While Tun Sakaran Marine Park has no accommodation, you can easily make a day trip from Sampurna or stay on a resort located on one of the neighboring islands. If you're a lover of white sandy beaches, Pom Pom Island will take your breath away. Pom Pom's reefs slope down to deep waters and reveal a wide array of photogenic small and medium-sized marine life. At certain times of the year, the water is so clear that you can enjoy a glorious view of the subsurface surroundings. Staying on Pom Pom also allows you to dive at the surrounding islands, including Tun Sakaran Marine Park. Accommodation on the island varies from a boutique luxury style resort to more basic accommodation at a diver's lodge just right on the beach. Arguably one of Asia's most romantic beach settings, but also a diver's haven, Mata King is the island for romantics and nature lovers. It is the ideal spot to propose to a loved one and maybe even get married underwater. There are more than 10 dive sites around Mata King itself and many more in close proximity to surrounding islands. A favorite among divers is the Mata King House Reef. Interesting and rare creatures make regular appearances here. You can swim right up to large schools of fish and observe remarkable marine life behavior close up. Fancy posting mail underwater? Shipwreck Post is Malaysia's only underwater post box. Just drop in your postcard. Imagine the look of amusement on your family and friends' faces once they realize you posted it underwater. You can stay on Mata King's luxury resort and pamper yourself with the finest facilities. One of the last few islands within Sabah's territorial waters, Bohean and Timba Timba have only recently been open to divers. Expect to have the vicinity to yourself while exploring the reef and its inhabitants. The islands are just at the edge of a deep water channel. The deep cold water supplies a steady stream of nutrients to the reef, making the area a preferred spot for marine life of all sizes. Here you would be in a great location to see some of the larger underwater inhabitants, or even the occasional migrating marine life. If you're looking for the unexpected, Bohean and Timba Timba will not disappoint. As Sabah's only man-made tropical reef island, Roach Reef is a truly exclusive sanctuary that lets you get away from it all. The surrounding reefs conceal many alluring underwater temptations, wrecks, reefs, sandbeds, and there are plenty of marine activities. You can't miss the many cleaning stations at Roach Reef.
Within deeper waters, you can stop at Malaysia's first and only underwater bus stop. Don't hope to catch a bus ride here, but you can catch a spectacular sight of old buses placed underwater to spur marine life. Roach Reef offers comfortable accommodation and makes for a remarkable little landmark surrounded by nothing but the blue ocean. At the edge of the Borneo continental shelf, overlooking the Celebes Sea, lies breathtaking Kapalai Island. And the best part, all dive sites are nearby. You can even dive off the dive center pier and you will find yourself in a macro lover's haven. Enjoy muck diving at its best. Witness an unequaled concentration of peculiar and rare marine fauna. Kapalai is also well known as a regular spot for many professional underwater photographers. If it is their preferred destination, then you can be sure that Kapalai must truly be something extraordinary. The luxury resort that occupies a large reef flat is designed in local water village style, overlooking the water's edge. A short boat ride from Sampurna town is Mabul Island. This is muck diving heaven. As you descend to the silty, shallow and flat seabed, you'll soon know why. Within these murky depths, there is a world of unusual, weird and wonderful critters. These smaller bottom dwellers can be exceptionally alluring with their bizarre looks, unique behavior and mannerisms. But in Mabul, you don't need to miss out on coral reefs, where sea turtles are plenty, as well as other reef inhabitants. After your share of muck and coral reef diving, do drop by on at least one of the many artificial reef dive sites nearby. Mabul also offers a good choice of dive resorts. You can stay in chalets right on the beach or in a tropical garden. There are also luxurious bungalows built on stilts on a reef flat. And if you really want an extraordinary experience, there is the Platform Hotel, a rig that has been converted to a comfortable lodge with a house reef just below. Last but not least, there are liverboards which run regular dive trips to Mabul and other nearby islands. The world-famous Sipadan Island has become the international icon for diving in Sabah. It is one of the most precious marine ecosystems in the world due to the amazing marine flora and fauna that thrive in the surrounding waters. The entire Sipadan area has been designated as a protected area for marine conservation. To dive in Sipadan is an almost unbelievable experience. The sheer variety of underwater species makes Sipadan the mother of all dive sites in Sabah. Sipadan's reef inhabitants have become accustomed to daily visits of scuba divers. Therefore, they're not threatened by the presence of bubble-blowing intruders. Don't be surprised to find yourself seeing up to 30 turtles in just one dive. Sharks are a common sight and equally regular are pelagic sightings. With a bit of luck, you are in for a special treat, coming face to face with the biggest fish in the sea. In preserving the delicate marine environment of Sipadan, only a limited number of divers are allowed into the area every day. As Sipadan has no accommodation, you can stay on the neighboring islands or at Sampurna. As you can see, Sabah's water is a diving paradise like no other. One that will captivate your memories and leave you with a longing to return. Come experience one of nature's most beautiful wonders. Come dive Sabah. Welcome to Sabah, Malaysian Borneo. This is a golfer's dream come true. Far from the crowd, yet within easy reach from almost anywhere in the world. Here, in the heart of Southeast Asia, golfers can enjoy the best of Borneo any time of the year, from the tip to the top. There's even the option of playing at night. Sabah in northern Borneo is Malaysia's second largest state. The state capital, Kota Kinabalu, faces the South China Sea, while lush tropical highlands provide a magical backdrop. This is the same natural setting that awaits golfers at some of Sabah's best courses. At the northern end of Borneo is the oldest golf club in Sabah, 
the Kudat Golf Club, established in 1906. The club is part of the Kudat Golf and Marina Resort, which includes a hotel. Following a major upgrade in 2002, it is now an 18-hole par 72 championship course. This mature 6,080-meter course has its own unique challenges. The new front nine, built around the Marudu Bay, provides a scenic view of the sea and the Bangkoka Peninsula. The golf club is in the center of Kudat, a quiet and peaceful town, less than three hours drive from Kota Kinabalu. This is the northern tip of Borneo, the world's third largest island. In Kota Kinabalu, the Sutra Harbour Golf and Country Club lies in the city itself and is barely 10 minutes from the airport. This 27-hole par 72 layout was designed by Graham Marsh, who created three distinct nines, the lakes, heritage and garden. The course sits within idyllic settings and features graceful Bermuda fairways and Tiftwaf greens. This is the only course in East Malaysia that offers night golfing, which allows play until 12 midnight. The course played host to the Omega Asian PGA Tour Sabah Masters in the year 2000. The Golf and Country Club is part of the 384-acre Sutra Harbour Resort, which also has a marina and two world-class hotels, the Pacific Sutra and Magellan. Its close proximity to the city centre offers the chance to easily explore Kota Kinabalu. Also nearby are the five islands of the Tunku Abdurrahman National Park. Sixty-nine kilometers south of the city is the Borneo Golf and Country Club, an exquisite 6,546-meter Jack Nicholas signature course. The Golden Bear took full advantage of the natural features of the lagoon and terrain to craft out an 18-hole par 72 course that promises supreme challenges and excitement to both professional and social golfers. Graced with undulating Bermuda fairways and Tiftwaf greens, this course presents a spectacular seaside setting, fanned by an ever-present breeze. Its signature hole 14 is a par 3, 172-meter challenge that requires a tee across a cove and cutting through fierce crosswinds. Chalet accommodation is available at the Prescott Resort Hotel, situated beside the clubhouse. There is also a good range of facilities for golfers and non-golfers. The championship course is the only venue outside of Kuala Lumpur, which has hosted the prestigious Putra Cup, the Southeast Asian Team Golf Championship. Golfing treasures lie north of Kota Kinabalu. Shangri-La's Dalit Bay Golf and Country Club offers a sculptured 18-hole par 72 course designed by Ted Parslow. It is one of the most challenging golf courses in Sabah. Barely 25 minutes from the city, Dalit Bay is bordered by the Tambalang and Mangkabong rivers and offers a stunning vista of Mount Kinabalu, 
the highest mountain between the Himalayas and New Guinea. Its signature Hole 11 stretches 158 meters and requires a tee across a river mouth to land the ball on a gently contoured green flanked by bunkers on either side. The Golf and Country Club is part of the five-star hotel, the Shangri-La's Rasaria Resort. Also about half an hour from the city is the Karambunai Resorts Golf Club, which boasts an 18-hole par 72 championship course in a panoramic setting. The course was crafted by American golf architect Ronald Freem, who made full use of the scenic site. The course features several dogleg holes, strategically placed bunkers and water hazards, as well as Freem's trademark mounding and contouring. A natural rainforest and Mount Kinabalu form a magnificent backdrop, while several holes face the South China Sea. This course offers a challenging round for the single handicapper, as well as a relaxing game for the social golfer. The golf club is part of the Nexus Resort Karambunai, where accommodation includes beachfront suites and presidential villas. The Mount Kinabalu Golf Club, about two hours from the city, promises the ultimate highland golfing experience in Borneo. This 18-hole par 72 course, perched about 1,500 meters above sea level at the foot of Mount Kinabalu, was designed by Robert Muir Graves. This is a challenging course for any golfer because mental and physical fitness will truly be put to the test. Hole 14 is the signature hole and a spectacular par 3. Players must play across the deepest hazard imaginable a ravine with a river at the bottom. From an elevated tee, accuracy is crucial because the green is tiny and perched on the edge of a cliff. The course layout offers a panoramic view of the mountain and surrounding farmlands. This is the highest altitude golf course in Southeast Asia and presents an additional unique challenge, unpredictable mountain weather. Natural vegetation hazards are found throughout the course. The golf club lies within the Kinabalu Park, which has been declared a World Heritage Site. Accommodation facilities in the area include a hotel, hillside chalets and motels. On the east coast of Sabah is the district of Tawau, home to the magnificent 18-hole par 72 Shan Shui Golf and Country Club, which has received international exposure and recognition. It was designed by world-renowned golf course architects Nelson and Harworth and is regarded as their finest piece of work in Asia, which also hosted the Asian PGA Tour Sabah Masters in 1998 and 1999. It is rated as the longest course in Malaysia with 6,644 meters from the championship tees. Its signature hole number 5, also known as the Sulu Split, is a par 5 measuring 531 meters. The entire hole layout and surrounding areas are visible from the tee, giving players two options, play safe down the left side or challenge the lower fairway on the right and go for the green in two.
Speaking of challenges, one of Southeast Asia's toughest courses is in Kota Kinabalu, the prestigious Sabah Golf and Country Club, designed by Robert Muir Graves. Play is by member arrangement. This traditional inland Par 72 championship course opened in 1976 and is the oldest 18-hole golf course in the state. It has repeatedly hosted the Sabah Masters, which is part of the Asian PGA Tour. Every hole presents a string of challenges with undulating fairways, hilly terrain, large lakes, tracks of mature trees and adverse winds. Sabah's golf courses may have their individual characteristics, but there is one thing they have in common. The combination of natural elements and ingenious architecture to give golfers the ultimate pleasure of the game. This is the best of Borneo. Sabah, Malaysian Borneo, a golfer's paradise. <laughs>